Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I just got back from Blue Ridge, Georgia. I've been up there for the last three nights. I'm going to let you see this little video I recorded off the balcony. I, I went on VRBO and I got a place at the very top of the mountain. It was awesome. Wow, it's about sundown. I'm in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Maybe I'll show you all where I stayed up here because you might... This is, I think it's the best view on the mountain. It's the top of the mountain too. Very nice. It's cold out here now. If you don't like cold, you might not want to come. Now, this was at the very top of the mountain, and I'm not ashamed to admit, I am the digital asset investor who is officially scared of heights. So even though uh, it's a little emasculating, I did have my wife drive, drive me to the top of the mountain. <laughs> I like being on the mountain, not getting to the top of the mountain. Um, so <laughs> that's a true story. I do not drive up the side of mountains. Now, there's so many things that, I mean, it's amazing. If I even put this channel down for even a half of a day, I'm sitting there looking at my phone. I'm like, it's, it's like somebody's waiting for me to leave to all of a sudden release all the good juicy information in the in the crypto space and that's what happened this time john deaton went on to uh did a he did a, an interview with some of the guys over at link to and here digital perspectives had put this video up watch this. what do you expect to happen once the case gets gets settled you you think they're going to go public right away you think well, how do you think it plays out i would assume that part of the settlement if there is a settlement part of the settlement would be at least informal discussions that that you know within six months that there's mm -hmm. gonna you know there's gonna be no issue with ripple going public i think it's going to be very fast certainly yeah. within certainly within a year i wouldn't be surprised if they go public within six months of of clarity or settlement gotcha wow that would be great and, and i think great. i mean you know think about it uh you know, I, I know I'm not a spokesperson for Link to or anything, but I think that on your guys' platform, you have them valued at what, like seven point nine, seven, eight, something like that. Yeah, seven point nine, and the and the current valuation out there is what, Ray, fifteen billion? Fifteen billion. All right, yeah. so you guys, you guys have them valued at 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 half, but I always look at it like, all right, if 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 there's fifty three billion XRP and you know, let's say the fair value of XRP is $2. Just right. pick, a, pick, a, pick a conservative number. Right. $2, well, that gives you a, a over a hundred billion, you know, valuation with without the software and without the banking relationship. I know, it's amazing. You know? It's, my, it's really mind blowing, John, when you put it that way. And I don't think a lot of people are thinking about that. You know, that treasury of XRP, when it's properly valued and there's real price discovery is going to be mind blowing. And I agree with you a hundred percent on it. They make some really good points because you do have linked to at this moment, I think they've got a little bit left. I think most of it sold, but there's a little bit left. If, if you haven't looked at it, you might want to, but they've got it. Uh, they're selling it at a $7.9 billion valuation and ripple through their recent sale sale. Um, had, it gets a valuation of 15 billion. What they're saying is XRP's never really had price discovery. All the things we've uncovered, you, if there's anybody who's been paying any attention, you know that the, there hasn't been real price discovery of XRP. Everything that you can possibly think of to be tried from lawsuits to government intervention to all sorts of things have been used to keep XRP to sending out talking heads on television, you name it, it's been done so that XRP does not get to achieve the, the actual price discovery that it would have. Um, okay, so that's good stuff. If you haven't checked that out, you need to. Here's another clip from John Deaton in that same interview. I mean, listen, you can just go to crypto law, 
us go to the video library and i didn't do it all i did was assemble it but as you know uh the the internet sleuths the, the digital asset investors and the backup bradleys and and all of those people i've taken their uh investigative skills put together the library that really a monkey could prove that that was an unregistered securities offering so how do you think that's going to play moving forward based upon this case setting the bar and, and tone uh so astounding that you know here we have the media uh publicizing a narrative that just is completely uh, false while we've got small time guys like i mean they're not small in my eyes but dai bradley comes you know they're not running abc or cb C, uh, cbs or whoever nbc but where i'm getting at is do you think this is just going to create an opportunity not just for xrp holders or crypto but uh, in different industries as well yeah i think actually uh listen this case it's not hyperbolic for me to say that this is the most significant non-fraud securities enforcement action since Howie, or at least in decades. I mean, if you take out the Enrons and the fraud cases, right, um, there's no bigger case than digital currency, cryptocurrency, and and XRP was number three. I think that this is going to be taught um, in classrooms uh, about, you know, what I've been labeling decentralized justice, where a community uh, decentralized um, gets together and they pool their sources and create basically um, they don't allow the false narrative, if you will, you know, that's mm -hmm. being pushed by the media. So I definitely think that it's, it's a great study in where we're at and the impact of social media. What a great point he makes. I mean, you, you, all of you out there that have been, you know, all you that, that have been putting all that, finding all the photos and the, putting the timelines together and the videos and the finding videos, you know, the TAIGs, there's a ripple eye. There's all kinds of people that have been pu pulling all kinds of information from all over the place. And it's literally changed the world, changed the way things are done. And uh, we needed some change because there was a narrative being flowed that just wasn't true. It's, it's still, they're still trying to do it. Um, okay, now this is the other thing that happened um, while while I was uh, away is that this, or while I was traveling anyway, Brad Garlinghouse, the truth is out for everyone to read. What we see is that the SEC waited eight years to decide they disagreed with the, this analysis, decimating thousands and thousands of XRP holders who they purport to protect in the process. So much for being mission driven. And he's retweeting this tweet from Stuart Alderati. Let me see. I think that's the same. Yeah. Um, the conclusion of these now public 2012 memos is clear. XRP do not constitute securities. The fact that Ripple had the foresight to seek legal advice from a prominent firm in 2012 in the absence of a clear case of law and five years before the SEC even started talking about digital assets should be applauded. Now, this is the memo. Now, I want, to, I want you to remember this I'm, I'm probably gonna have to break this video into two parts because i'm trying to get myself caught up here but look who who it was to it was to chris larson and jed mccaleb of, of open coin and it was from dax hansen keith miller and carla reyes so but this guy dax hansen he's been very prominent in crypto from the beginning and dax hansen is the partner of lowell ness and I've even shown you video of both of them. I'll show you, maybe not in this, in the next video if you don't see it here. I'm gonna to try to get at least halfway through all this material I've got. So remember Dax Hansen, because he, the, per, this is Perkins Coie, same law firm that Lowell Ness was with. Lowell Ness being the, the guy who wrote the Safe Harbor memo that went to Bill Hinman and, and them at the SEC, and that became the Ethereum Free Pass speech. Okay, that's Lowell Ness's own words. Well, his partner's Dak Hansen, and turns out this guy is the same. This is the guy who wrote Ripple this memo telling them that he didn't believe XRP was a security. Small world. John Deaton added to his, his timeline, Undisputed Facts Timeline Editions, 2012 Perkins Cooey, the same law firm that helped write the Hinman's Ethereum Free Pass speech, informed Chris Larson, 
Hashtag Ripple credits, a.k.a. XRP, is not a security. The 2012 memo warned Larson there was a risk under the Bank Secrecy Act. Um, the 2012 legal memo stated that the law firm's analysis has never been tested by FinCEN in practice, and therefore reliance thereon is not without risk. The Perkins Coie was, was spot on. The, uh, the Perkins Coie memo was spot on because in 2015, FinCEN sued Ripple, claiming it vi had violated the BSA. FinCEN's suit against Ripple was the first civil law enforcement action against a cryptocurrency industry player, a case of true first impression in the industry. Ripple settled paying $700,000. We knew this. Ripple was classified as money service business. Uh, any sale or... Da -da -da. In 2015, this was the agreement. And the irony is that the, the assistant U.S. attorney that signed off on this agreement was none other than Katie Hahn, who later shows up at Andres and Horowitz, right? Um, then, uh, let's see. After conducting this in-depth legal analysis of XRP, the staff did not met recommend filing an enforcement action against Ripple. Next day on June 2014, wait, let's see. Um, all right, so he's got a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not going to go through all of this, but it's, a, it's an interesting read right here. Okay. Now, you got to see this. This is from the Tucker Carlson show. It's a six minute video. I highly recommend all of you go and, and go to this person's thing and, and watch it. Just watch. I'm just going to let you watch the beginning though. It's pretty amazing what's going on. So the lawless crackdown you just saw going on in Canada right now will have consequences for all of us because Trudeau has not just ended freedom of assembly and speech arresting journalists. As part of his emergency authority, Trudeau also gave himself the power to control all money in Canada, seize the bank accounts and crypto wallets of private citizens. On what basis? We don't know. He just asserted it. His deputy prime minister has announced those seizures are in progress now. Watch. The names of both individuals and entities, as well as crypto wallets, have been shared by the RCMP with financial institutions have been frozen and more accounts will be frozen so when you imagine tyranny you imagine people being loaded into some sort of transport to go to a camp but this is 2022 tyranny looks a little different now tyranny is when they take all your money and you have no power whatsoever and that's exactly what trudeau's government is doing to anyone who dissents they're targeting crypto exchanges that's where people keep their cryptocurrency. They, see they convert it quickly into cash. Money on those exchanges is no longer safe, defeating the whole point of cryptocurrency. Jesse Powell is the CEO of the crypto exchange Kraken, just wrote that Canada, quote, 100% will force his company to freeze assets without judicial consent. Again, lawlessly, they're just doing it. He added this, quote, if you're worried about it, don't keep your funds with any centralized regulated custodian. We cannot protect you. You almost never hear businesses telling customers, we can't protect you. That's honest. So what are the criteria here? On what basis are Canadian authorities raiding currency platforms and seizing digital currencies? Well, Canada's so-called justice minister explained the criteria the other day. He announced that Canada's government doesn't need a court order in order to take all of your money. Here's the standard. If you've ever supported Donald Trump, then you can lose access to your bank accounts. Your political views will determine whether you have any money at all. Watch. Well, if, I think if you if you are a member uh, of you know a, a pro-Trump movement who's donating hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars to this kind of thing, then you ought to be worried. So again, w without becoming hysterical about it, we cannot overstate the importance of what we're watching right here. It is a preview. Canada is not the last country in which this will happen, in which a neoliberal government will become a fascist government overnight while smiling and talking about diversity. Un freaking believable. That is downright scary, folks. If there was ever a time for you to get a Ledger Nano S, now's the time. I'm going to put this in the in the top of the description of this video because what's going on is in freaking sane. Uh, I'm going to show you these and then I'll end this video. Open C, we are actively investigating rum rumors of an exploit associated with Open C related smart contracts. This appears to be a phishing attack 
originating outside of OpenSea's website. Do not click links outside of OpenSea.io. And then there was this from Mr. Whale breaking massive OpenSea exploit in their migration contract allowed users to sell, steal any NFT from any users over $200 million lost already. Man. Scary, scary stuff out there right there, folks. I'll tell you what. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family to get a freaking Ledger Nano S and have the proper security in place, which includes having a VPN. I'll, there's a link in the description on that. Having a YubiKey. So if you, when you do access websites, when you own crypto, just Look in the description of the video, folks. I'm